Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Education Nation. My name is Tim Swain, and we are going to be talking about a very, very popular app or website that your son and daughter may be using a lot with their education during this uh, whole COVID-19 uh, lockdown that we're experiencing. Tonight, we are going to look at Zoom. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. You've heard of it. You have been hearing a lot of it. You've been hearing a lot of great things, but there's some bad things that have happened as well with Zoom. If you've uh, been on social media or looked at the news, uh, this very, very popular video conferencing uh, pr uh, product, excuse me for lack of a better term, I couldn't get it out. It's, there are some issues there. There are some issues there. And it's, it's a great tool that a lot of uh, teachers and schools and school districts are using to uh, do the whole uh, online uh, distance learning. Um, and, and it's good. It's, it's, a really, it's a really great tool, but there are a few little things that you as a parent need to know and that you need to be aware of. So uh, we're going to go to the old Google Nader here. And what I want you to type in is uh, parents. Oops, I can do that. Ultimate guide. To Zoom. And we are going back to commonsensemedia.org. We talked about that website <clears throat> last week. And so here is this article that just came out uh, a few days ago. And this is a review of Zoom. Now, I just want to say up front that I in no way work for commonsensemedia.org. Uh, this is just, in my opinion, it's a pretty good resource. Um, but like I've like I've discussed before in my in my previous videos, you as a parent, you need to go out and look at look at different sources, do your research, and not just focus on on one website or particular uh, avenue for your research. You need to look at everything as a whole. Um, because you know this one right here, uh, this ultimate guide to Zoom, it's it's pretty positive. It's pretty positive, and and I know I was reading some of the comments that some of the people were saying, and they're like, you know, hey, uh, Common Sense Media, are you working for these people? Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of talk about some things here, so that you have a pretty good understanding of what Zoom is, what it's about, how it's used and maybe some areas where uh, we could run into some trouble. But like I always said, go out and, and Google Zoom and look at your articles and look at your research and, and definitely uh, uh, investigate this because a lot of schools, like I said, a lot of teachers are Zooming with your kids. And uh, so you need, to, you need to know what's going on. You know, look at the, look at the, uh, the logo here, here, you know, they, they say it's pretty zippy name. It's, you know, pretty cool. It's Zoom. Um, it first came out in 2013 and it primarily was for the business. Uh, it was the whole video conferencing. And, and now what has happened is because of COVID-19 and our, our schools are out and teachers and students are having to do online learning. We call it remote learning. Apps like this, Zoom, uh, Google Meets, have really exploded. And what Zoom did is when the, the online learning really started to, to become popular and, and that schools were going to this, Zoom went ahead and they have a couple different levels of uh, subscriptions. And what they did is they really said, hey, if you want to uh, sign up with your school email address, you know, we'll, we'll kick you up to another subscription. So 
they they uh, they kind of they they did their own marketing and they got a lot of people to sign up. And there is a lot of schools, a lot of schools uh, here in the United States, all over the world uh, are using Zoom. I know that I teach at college, community college at night. And uh, before I even heard of Zoom, I was getting an email with a uh, login and a password and an updated account. And I was like, what is all this? And boy you know it, it's it's really uh it's really come come on fast and hard and i've been i've been using it i use it with my college kids at night and i've uh, been pretty successful and so i'm going to next week kind of talk about zoom from a teacher standpoint and what a teacher or an educator can kind of do to make sure that uh you're not having issues so, so Zoom is, is become very, very popular. It is a, uh, it's a video chatting or a video conferencing network. It's like Skype, it's like Google Hangout. Uh, and, and it works off your computer, it works off your phone, it accesses your camera and uh, it connects. Uh, I think my account, I can connect up to 300 people uh, so I know that different accounts have different levels and, and you can connect a lot of people and you can connect them just with an audio. You can connect them with either, uh, with audio and video so you can see the visual and, um, kids are attending online classes. Uh, teachers are, are doing lessons. Um, families are communicating so it's it's basically it's skype but in my opinion it's like skype on steroids it's 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 just it's i remember using skype years ago and it just was uh i know they've improved it since then but uh you know it just was kind of choppy and and different things like that and i wasn't too too impressed this is pretty impressive there's a lot of things um uh, that that you can do. So how does it work? Uh, so in essence, you have a host, uh, could be an, a teacher or whoever is going to host this meeting. It could be, you know, another, another kid having a meeting with his friends. It could be a family member, whatever it is. And then, and they go on to, uh, go on to the zoom website and they have their account and they go ahead and they set up this meeting and they email uh, people that they want in this meeting a link. And so um, all, the people, all you have to do if you wanna join this meeting is you just, you hit this link and um, sometimes uh, there's passwords that set on them, uh, sometimes there's not. Uh, again, these are all things that I'll talk about in the, in the next segment with, with educators. Uh, but there's there's a lot of different options that uh, you can do while you're setting up these meetings. And in essence, let's say we're going to have a we're going to do a lesson. I'm going to do a lesson with my math kids at two o'clock. Get online, and all the kids just keep coming. They and they come, and you can see them all on the screen there. And uh, you you do your lesson and it's a virtual classroom uh the software is is pretty slick it runs really well uh you can record meetings you can transcribe what was said in the meetings uh there's just a lot of things that you can do with it i've been using zoom for a couple months now with my uh with my college kids and um uh, haven't had any issues. Uh, every now and then, the, just with the internet, your, your internet connection, you know, gets a little spotty at times just because there's so many people that are using the internet now uh, compared to before. So every now and then, um, but really, I haven't had any glitches or anything like that. So it's, it's, been, it's been really successful. So how are teachers, Using Zoom, they're 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 contacting your kids. They're sending your kids these links, and they're saying, "Hey, we're going to have class at two o'clock tomorrow," 
And, and the teacher can do a variety of things. It's just like the classroom. It's just that everyone's in their home and including the teacher. You can, uh, the teacher can do a virtual whiteboard where you, you project a whiteboard on the screen. Uh, you, you can, as a teacher, you can lecture and, and do your notes on the whiteboard and the kids are taking notes. They can interact, they can speak, you can see them, they can see you. It, it's just like, it's just like a classroom, but it's a, it's a virtual classroom. Uh, kids, there's a, there's a chat function on there where, uh, you know, kids could, could chat with the teacher um, instead of, you know, saying something into their microphone or they can chat with each other. Um, and here's a little downfall. There's some private chatting where normally in a classroom as a teacher, you're right there and you're kind of seeing everything going on. Whereas with this, um, you know, there, there's some, there's some things that can be, that can happen. You know, there's some kids that they can send um, private messages to other kids and, you know, it could be uh, up to no good. Uh, so, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of different things that a teacher uh, could use. Uh, I know, I know some teachers that uh, they say, okay, um, here's, here's my link and I'm going to have office hours uh, from this time to this time. And then as kids are working on their schoolwork and they need to go and see the teacher, they can just go get on link, get online and, uh, and, you know, can, can work one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. So, you know, it's, it's actually, it's, it's, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good thing. And so I would suggest, okay, and this is, I'm going to really uh, focus and stress with teachers, but also parents, please make sure that you have some type of conversation with your child's teacher. I'm sure, or I'm hoping that the, their, uh, your child's teacher has sent out some type of communication to the parents, kind of explaining how the Zoom is going to work, kind of do's, don'ts, rules, policies, discipline, attendance, all that, all that stuff. But if they haven't, um, please parents get in contact with your teacher, uh, especially if they're using Zoom with your child. Not that it's anything up to no good, but just so that you are informed and you are aware. I have the school district that I've worked in, uh, that I'm working in, excuse me, and uh, we're, uh, uh, a lot of teachers are using Zoom and we're uh, telling our colleagues, our teachers, that before you have a Zoom session with a student or students, that you get parent permission. Parents, I, I, you, need to give, you need to give permission to this. You need to know what's going on and, and be involved and be informed. So um, definitely we're suggesting the teachers that they receive uh, parent permission and, and parents, you know, please make sure that your, your teachers, your, your child's teachers have, have reached out to you and they have had a discussion a communication as to how Zoom is going to be used and policies and procedures. That is huge. Okay, that is definitely huge. Um, another thing is that uh, Zoom accounts. All right, and and here's something that uh, you know we we you kind of need to know about with you know parents. Um, so. In order for students to access the link, okay, they, they really, they don't need a, a Zoom account. They can just get online and let's say the teacher emails your child the link and all your child has to do is hit the link and it takes you into that Zoom session. Now, if teachers have put some restrictions on there. When creating an account, uh, there are some restrictions that uh, the host can put. And one of the restrictions is that uh, to only allow uh, people that have been authorized. 
And, and that is basically where then your child has to sign up for a Zoom account and in either, and, and either to, to, to get, uh, gain access to uh, this teacher's lessons or uh, a virtual classroom that uh, they need to either sign into Zoom or they need to have a, a, a password uh, in, in a Zoom account. Um, 